There is nothing better than your co-host walking out as the show begins. Kenny, I bleep you not. Rico, frantically trying to get my attention. and Puts his phone up to his ear and he goes, this is about the schedule. Oh, okay. Big Ten schedule day. Rico is in a tizzy. So Rico has stepped out to get some more of these details. Let's speculate. Who do you think he's talking to right I now? Don't, I don't care who he's talking to. It was the greatest ring? thing in the world to have him just walk out of here as the show starts going, schedule D, got to go. Talk to me. That was great. You're amped up. This is like Christmas for you. Big Ten, the tooth that the new era. The anticipation of how they are going to do this with USC and UCLA coming into the mix. I'll make you a bet. Yeah. I will wager lunch to anyone in this room. USC and UCLA are going to play Michigan, Ohio State, or Penn State to open their Big Ten career. Why? Ah, money. Mar- media markets. TV. TV. Um, but no, I, look, we'll get it at 4.30, but you have something you want to open with that's different, unless you want to tell us who you were talking to. No. Uh, we can open up what was different. Damn it. <laughs> Most predictable no of all time. I know, right? You know what? As you say, you got to ask. You don't get the order. All right. Um, were they a coach? Uh, so here's what happens. It appears... <laughs> It appears that um, the flex schedule, they don't know exactly which schedule is coming out, but it appears it's going to be the flex schedule for the Big Ten, meaning the biggest thing is you get to pick your protected rivals. So there's going to be some teams with three rivals, some teams with two, some teams with one, Mm -hmm. and it also will do away with divisions. That's what it appears that it's going to be. So So, how do you account for teams with three and other teams with one? Who gets to make the choice? It's like it's like match.com or Tinder where you want to be my rival. I want to be your rival. Okay, it's now protected. So we go that route. I believe Iowa is going to have three of Minnesota, Wisconsin. Wisconsin and Nebraska. Where there's other schools that will just have one. And I believe Ohio State is one of those schools that got smart and said, you know what? We'll just have one. Michigan, you're our rival. That's it. Everybody else we'll take our chances with. And then they're going to try to rotate all the teams in there with home and home games. So you could have three rivalries because they couldn't decide how many protected rivalries. So they just went flex schedule and said, okay, you guys tell me how many rivalries you want. You know what? And we'll make the schedule accordingly. This is the easiest thing in the world. Seriously. I got a solution for Michigan and Michigan State. Let me say this. I don't have to like what Michigan does to respect it, but they've taken an SEC model. Every team in the Big Ten is going to play a Power 5 team in the non-con, except who? Michigan, dummy. (laughs) The point is, Michigan wants to play Ohio State. That's their sacred cow, right? right? They don't want to play us anymore. They don't like us. They don't want to play us. They find us to be a nuisance, right? Well, I got news for you. I don't care if we play them anymore. After getting railroaded last year the way we did, it doesn't matter what we do against these guys. And you know what? They're better than we are. So how about we just dodge them? Do what they do. Dodge any real competition. And you know who I'd like to declare as Michigan State's rival? Let me guess. Indiana. The old brass platoon. It's a very proud trophy. Very prestigious. Oh, and think about this. Realistically speaking, we've talked about it on this show. The rivalry is at a toxic place that it has really never been. It's always been about hate, but it's gotten gross, right? Who cares? I want to win games. Michigan doesn't really want to make us a protected rival. They'd rather just focus on OSU. Let them. I don't give a damn. For Michigan State, I just want to win games. I, honestly, see, I think for Michigan, I think for both schools, man, it's almost that I don't think either school really wants you to play don't the want, other. You don't want to, but you have to. It's like inviting the in laws. You got to just to keep the peace, but no, yeah, I don't have to. I don't really, if they don't show up, I'm I'm good with that as well. But I think out of obligation, 
You got to you, you want to be rivals? Yeah, kind of no. figured you were going to say. No, that. I don't. Yeah. If you're telling me the conference is allowing me to select who my protected rivals are, why would I have two? I think why the smart have, money is not taking one. Right. So if I'm Michigan State, why would I have Penn State as a rival as well? Why would I have Indiana as a rival? Why would I protect these games? Protect one. Here, call Northwestern. And would you like to be my neighbor? Right. I was about to say, that's it. Hey, Northwestern, we got a large UF, I mean, MSU alums in Chicago area. The, we will fill your stadium every time. But see, the idea that they have left this up to teams, that is laughable. No, it, it was the debate. It's kind of like with the SEC. The SEC went into the final 11th hour trying to decide their schedule because half the teams wanted to play nine games. The other half said eight games. And finally they said, okay, you know what? We're going to kick it down the road. Eight games for 2024. We'll figure it out later. We got, we were, we're going to buy ourselves another year. For the Big Ten, I think that this schedule thing will change because you're going to see some teams who will take advantage of this and some that are like, why, why did we schedule all of these rivalry But this games? is my point, and I'll throw the number out, 248-539-9797. I'm not even kidding. If, if we look at this, does it behoove Michigan to play Ohio State and Michigan State every single season? Two teams that hate their guts. No, doesn't help you. No, you could say, well, we're going to beat you. Do me a favor. Before you burp your takes into a phone, go look at how much you beat us since 1955 when we joined the Big Ten. Why don't you just go look at every other year you come to Spartan Stadium? How often do you beat us? How much of a sure thing is it? Why don't you look at in your own stadium? How often you've been getting beat there the last 15 years? Let me make a point to you. You're better off not playing teams who hate your guts. If you're a Michigan State fan, let's be real about it. Sure, we love to hate Michigan. But reality is we have no idea where our program's at right now. And if the Big Ten is offering us the ability to, what, protect a more winnable game, how's it really any different than Michigan being the only team refusing to schedule a Power 5 team in the non-con? Why is it Michigan State? Why would I ever claim Penn State as a rival? At a minimum, if I'm going to protect one rival, I'll protect Michigan. Penn State's out. That's not a rivalry. It was a forced rivalry when they joined the Big Ten. Right, but I think it's one of those where everybody has to have one, and Penn State is like, fine. Not my problem. Now, in my world, Penn State wins. We'll take Michigan State. That'll be our one game we'll guarantee to play but them that's every— that's my whole yeah. point. We don't have to agree to it. Why would I ever agree to, to keeping Michigan? Why? What does it matter anymore? The only thing you're going to hear is tradition. and, and But see, tradition— is why the Big Ten does not make the national title game and win. Because we care more about the little trophies than the actual major trophy. It's fair. Biggest rivalry in college football right now is Alabama and Georgia. And they don't play each other. They make sure that game only happens, I once think, once every 10 years. Other than that, somehow or another, oh, it was a random schedule. And you know what? We'll see you in Atlanta. That way, you're 11-0. I mean, you're 12-0. We're 12-0. Winner goes, loser goes. They've set it up. Goes back to what I said with the coach that I talked to in the Big Ten. Everything that the SEC does is about winning the national title. Even coming down to scheduling. They'd rather the eight games so you could play an extra easier game so you could pad your schedule. So what do you think we're going to see at 430? Structurally. Structurally... That uh, four four team divisions? No, I don't think it's going to be any divisions. I think they're they're just going to come up with just different, just one division and the top two teams play in Indianapolis, which is going to be difficult because you're basically telling all those other like the Big Ten West, you don't have a shot anymore. We're tired of supporting you. We're tired of acting like you mean something. Well, hold on now. Wait a second. If the top two teams are Michigan and Ohio State, that means you're playing back-to-back -back weeks? And that's, You've just totally devalued one of the great rivalries in college football. Mike, you remember the Leaders and Legends? Yeah. That was set up so that Michigan and Ohio State would play in back-to-back -back weeks. Yeah, but I don't – hold on. It, it never materialized. I understand that, but that was also 15, 20 years ago. Right. Rico, in the here and now, if you're a Michigan fan – if what Rico's saying is correct, I don't know if it is or it isn't, but let's just talk about it for a second. 
Do you really want the possibility of your game, which right now is winner take all, factually, right now, unless something changes drastically? Most years, Michigan and OSU, it is winner take all to go to Indy. Now you mean to tell me you could go into that game and the result could not matter in the least. Not in the least. Because the the next week is the real winner. Which we've seen in the NFL. And you know what happens in the first round of those games? Hey, we're finishing the year. It's Bengals-Ravens, but Bengals-Ravens are playing in the wild card? Mm -hmm. Nobody cares. Mm -hmm. See, to me, that's disgraceful. That's an embarrassment. That would be the equivalent of the SEC switching to a model, and I understand that this isn't totally relevant because Florida's no good anymore. But if Georgia and Florida played in the world's biggest cocktail party to finish the season and could face each other the next week in Atlanta, that game doesn't matter. Got devalued. You're telling me that's what you think's happening at 430? That's what I believe is happening. With no divisions, they're going to go to the top teams. Now, like I said, I would love for them to even – I don't know if they're even going to expand the playoffs like and have a 14 playoff for the Big Ten title, which would be better. But semis and then a final? Semi, right, and then a final. But looking at this now, if they go without divisions, they're going to go with the top two. So here's my other question. Do they go without divisions because they know that while they haven't officially expanded today, they're going to by the time these games actually get played? Look at that man. Right Is that... There. So basically what we hear today may not ever it, materialize. No, no. I think it may materialize for one year. And then in 2025, we do it all. Kind of how what they did for the pandemic year, where a, a brand new schedule was invented. And guys, sorry about all the other stuff, but here's a new schedule. I don't think they're going to stick with this because you may have new teams coming in with Oregon and Washington. And then maybe they go with the pod system. So let me ask a question to the people. Your rivalry thing is already out there. I'll be honest with you. If the Big Ten's allowing me to choose how many rivals I have. You know what? I don't. Scataway is pretty nice in the fall. That's what I'm saying. The rivalries don't mean anything anyways. But here's the bigger prevailing one. It's not necessarily what we're going to see at 430. What do you want to see? 